how is it that why we are not able to succeed to a degree as we aspire to and that those could be you know many things you know in life because sometimes you know you think that oh i need to meditate more but you want to meditate more but somehow or the other you are not able to or maybe i was thinking like sometimes something is your weakness like maybe sweets are your weakness and you know that sugar is not good for you but somebody brings a delicacy in front of you and you're not able to say no at that moment so why is it that uh, these things they keep coming again and again and whereas on the other hand the scripture is telling us that in your soul you are perfect and be thou perfect as bible is saying because your father in heaven is perfect and we can only unite with that perfection only when we will regain that perfection of soul otherwise we won't be able to unite with that uh, eternal perfection in sachidananda and this is exactly what krishna is saying in the 18th chapter as i was reading these three shlokas and in these three shlokas he is reminding us that who qualifies to become one with brahman this is the 51st shloka he said absorbed in complete purity of the intellect subjugating body and senses by resolute self restrain protecting oneself as much as possible from noise and from other sense entanglements relinquishing both attachment and repugnance abiding in a solitary place eating lightly controlling the body speech and mind absorbing oneself in divine yoga meditation dispassionate serene self surrendered relinquishing any lingering attraction to power vanity lust anger possessions and the consciousness of me and mine such a person qualifies to become one with brahman now when i read these shlokas for the first time i said you know there is no hope for me left now <laughs> because this is something like three shlokas krishna is telling one by one by one what is it that takes you to the brahman and swami said that this is how delusion plays with our mind because delusion will make you think you cannot make it you won't be able to make it you will just fall short before the finishing line but as i was reading in one of the books of swami ji swami said that as a devotee you will be able to see many faults in you and that is a sign of progress at one point he said and he also said that when you are able to see flaws in yourself it's a blessing because there are hundreds others those who don't even know that they have flaws in them but what because the the beginning if you see the beginning when we say that uh, the beginning of bhagavad gita because when you start seeing that yes there is something which i need to change in myself that is the beginning of introspection because if you see the beginning of bhagavad gita begins with the first stanza where dhritarashtra is asking sanjay what did they do my sons and my uh, brother's son and so that is introspection that mind is asking sanjay sanjay is the intuitive discrimination the intuition by which we can go and see what is there in us what needs to be changed so it's a good sign that our intuitive discrimination is awakening that's the first sign because only after that battle can begin the real battle is yet to begin so and it is only in bhagavad gita i think because all these challenges you know which we see that you know they which are there in our in us in many forms in uh, whether they are habits or they are tendencies or desires or attachments as krishna is saying likes and dislikes liking for somebody i would request people to please switch on their switch off their mobile phones or any video if they are playing at the back or if it is very urgent you know they can see it you know later on so uh, what is it you know that all these uh, things you know and i don't think in any textbook of psychology uh, today somebody has an explanation for that but yogananda had an explanation for that that what are all these tendencies habits and desires which are holding you back are nothing but vrittis and these are those eddies which are always constantly present in our astral spine 
and they dissipate our energy as a result energy is not able to reach at the highest point and we are not able to realize our soul state and this is what holds us back and then he not only tells us why is it that you are not feeling free or you are not feeling perfect which you are as a soul but he also gives us a solution because he said that patanjali who is the father of yoga he said yoga is that science which helps you to neutralize those eddies because in the first stanza itself in patanjali sutra he says yoga chitta vritti nirodha something which can neutralize yoga is that science which can neutralize those eddies and even among the yoga krishna says that kriya yoga is the supreme science of yoga which can help us to dissolve those vrittis in ourselves and how does that happen because yogananda explains that all these desires likes and dislikes they start lodging in our astral spine at different centers to whatever center they belong to but when the kundalini shakti and when the power when the energy through kriya we are able to raise it up through our spine it is like that mighty river which keeps when it is in the full wake it takes all those minor eddies of currents you know which are on the bank and then the free flowing energy in your spine gives you that freedom makes you feel free makes you gives you the same feeling which as a soul it's a natural state and that is why when some of us those who know this supreme science and they are practicing they feel a certain freedom after practicing kriya they feel lighter they feel a sense of joy which is not coming from outside but it is their own soul joy which they are feeling because because of this kriya they are able to dissolve all those eddies and for a moment they feel wow this is exactly who i am because that is why patanjali said the feeling the real nature who you are will come to you as smriti that yes of course i am some swami said that of course you feel that this is who i am this is my real nature and allegorically also if you see this shakti is nothing but draupadi which uh, which is which is uniting with all the chakras the kundalini shakti and the kundalini shakti as it unites if you see in mahabharata the battle happened after the pandavas got married to draupadi it was on it was the abhim it was the arjuna who won actually draupadi in the swayamvar and later on they got married and they were in a way in this battle pandavas were fighting for the honor of draupadi because somehow the kauravas they disrespected her and they had to fight for her honor but there is another beautiful aspect to it because kriya alone is also not going to give us the complete freedom because draupadi alone would not have been able to give them the whole victory because yes she was an inspiration and they always pandavas always went to krishna you know when whenever they were in any dilemma whenever they were feeling overwhelmed at times because kauravas were very strong they were almost invincible and they were looking invincible in the big beginning and there were you know times when they were feeling challenged and they were going to krishna and krishna was giving them important counsels and only then they could win the battle and this is what bhagavad gita is also saying in later on in the same chapter in this shloka over and above the faithful performance of all one's duties and taking shelter completely in me he must still be received by my grace now just focus on that word still be he must still be received by my grace so i think krishna is making everything clear here that no yoga science in itself can give us that freedom it's only when we unite that science with devotion when we ask now even when we are practicing kriya it would be very good in fact it is mandatory that we invite the god's power to tell that god please take away these desires i don't want them please take away these likes and detachments i don't want them please dissolve them once for all and then as yukteswar ji was telling us that if you will practice kriya yoga with devotion then then it becomes a complete mathematical formula which can never fail you 
so this is in, this is in fact if, if i speak from my own experience you know there were there was a point when there was one particular desire was always making me feel bad about it and I, whenever i was you know going into that desire i was feeling though no i i always regretted you know i should not have done it but you know uh, all but I, but what was holding me back was i was thinking and i and later on as i re retrospectively think about it you know i was not having the courage to say to god that god please come and dissolve this desire once for all because i was holding it thinking that if i give even this desire what will remain with me but you know in the end i realized and when i gave it to when i had that courage to tell god that please take it away i don't want it now and suddenly i felt that it is not bothering me this desire does not bother me any longer it is as if you know it was only i who was holding it back and it is not the same challenge as it was earlier to battle with it so this is i think this is a very subtle point here because swami ji always kept us reminding that yes all these things which are holding us back because we are all perfect god made us perfect and that is why we say that man was created by god in his own image and if god is perfect naturally all his highest creation as man are also perfect but because of these tendencies because of these desires likes attachments we are not able to go and merge into that ocean of bliss which is always available to us we just keep holding it back to ourselves but the moment we tell him so please take it away i don't want it and he has given us a yoga science also then it can happen in that moment another thing which i uh, realize that uh, which is important is that why are we not able to hold on to it because sometimes you know i think many of us those who are sitting in this room they have felt god's presence in one way or the other at one point or the other because yogananda i think made it very simple that you can feel god in eight aspects and sometimes you have felt god as peace sometimes as joy sometimes as love but then why is it that we are not able to feel that all the time because that is what we want to that is what is our real nature and that is what swami was asking him sir i want to love god the way you love and in a way he wanted to ask yogananda sir how are you i want to have the same consciousness as you have at every moment and we all know what answer he gave he said how can a cup hold an ocean now that means that or whatever feeling you know at one saint he said it is not enough to just feel god but you will have to share god you will have to share whatever fruits you have felt in god and unless you share them with others you won't be able to expand you won't your cup won't expand and that is why that expansion that is why we were singing this chant that please make me the ocean i am a small bubble please help me to dissolve in the ocean so that i become one with you because feeling yes we are very fortunate first of all that we are on the path we are we know that introspection is coming day by day in us we know what what we need to do about it we have a tool we have a technique we also know how we can give everything to god but even that is not enough because if we have to merge in him we have to constantly keep expanding and that expansion can happen by sharing the fruits whatever fruit you are receiving in yourself just share it and you will see that slowly and slowly that cup will keep expanding and you won't even come to know when it became the ocean in fact the story of uh, sister gyanamata always comes to my mind sister gyanamata at the end of his life i think when master asked her sister if you have any desire please tell me i will complete it i will fulfill that desire for you if you have any desire and sister gyanamata said sir i want nirvikalp samadhi and yogananda said sister what is the point of asking which you already have now just imagine that a disciple of a great master may sometimes even don't know or he or the master will not make him know this that he had already become an ocean she had already become an ocean and she didn't even know about it now that is the beauty and i want to conclude this with the beautiful words from whispers from eternity and master said this book will speak to you when i won't be remaining in my physical body so i am speaking 
uh, just few lines from this prayer or a poem and the title is let me feel that thou and i are one teach me christ like by the power of concentration to still the restless storms of desire raging on the lake of my mind stilling those waters i lovingly behold thy unruffled face of cosmic stillness cause the little wave of my life to subside that thy consciousness in me spread out to become thine own vastness let me feel my heart throbbing in thy breast my feet moving with thy energy thy breath breathing through mine thy energy actively moving my arms thy thoughts weaving all the thoughts in my brain when i cry thy soft sigh within me wakens me to thy joy in thy playfulness little bubble visions of thy creation float dancingly in the chamber of my dreams which manifest in my sleep of delusion thy meteoric will courses through the skies of my own will power make me feel that it is thou who art i o oh, make me thyself that i behold my little bubble of self ever floating in thee